Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I am your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show, and um, finishing up the Texas wine tour with uh, Fall Creek. Now, this was the um, winery that I got to sit down with Ed and Susan All um, Ed and Susan Aller. Um, they were outstanding hosts. Um, if you ever get a chance to meet them, please do. Um, so it was it was a wonderful trip, and I would like to try to head back up there as soon as I can. Um, so. This was one wine I did not have during the interview. Um, I decided I wanted to buy something that I didn't already have. I, I bought three wines up there. I bought the Chenin Blanc and I bought the Meritus. Um, if the Tempranillo was for sale, I would have bought that too. Um, but uh, the Granite Reserve was something that just kind of caught my eye because it was called Granite Reserve. I would say I bought it because of the label. Okay. Now this was a um, uh, this is a non-vintage. As far as I can tell, uh, there's no vintage on it. There's nothing on the website. Um, it's a non-vintage, and um, it's on the website $9.99. Uh, on my receipt, it says $10.99, so however you want to do it. Uh, it's a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's 85% Cabernet Sauvignon, 15% Merlot. Now, here's something that's going to be a little significant. It is an American Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, what does that mean? Well, legally... That means those, ca those Cabernet Sauvignon grapes and those Merlot grapes can all come from anywhere inside of the United States. And it's not that the 85% of the Cabernet Sauvignon have to come from one spot. I mean, you know, 5% could come from my backyard and 10% come from Illinois. Um, I'm going to guess that uh, a large portion of the grapes are coming from Texas and that they're they're... Um, bolstering or whatever you want to call it, they're 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 adding grapes from other parts of the country, probably California, uh, or at least on the west coast of the United States. Um, I doubt they're going to be getting they're getting Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot from other states. Not to diss the other forty six or the other forty five of the forty six states, um, but um, it says it says American Cabernet Sauvignon. That's probably what it was, and I didn't really notice it until today, so I didn't have a chance to email. Uh, Susan and Ed to find out what the deal is with it, but I'm just going to say that most likely the majority of the grapes are not from Texas. One of the things I didn't talk about, and I can't remember exactly which one it was, but um, uh, oh, actually no, that's the next wine, which is not a Texas wine that talked about where the grapes come from. So I probably need to do a little research on what my theory of that is. Anyway, so let's get started with this. All right. Um, like I said, from the winery, nine ninety nine or ten ninety nine. That's nine ninety nine on the on the um, thing. My receipt said ten ninety nine, but uh, they did take care of me. Let's just put it that way. So, um, anyway, talk about color. Uh, it's it's a medium color. Um, I'm gonna say it's it's closer to being to me just like just regular red, not really garnet, clear of course. Talk about the aroma. I did pour out. I think I did. Not that I'm smelling anything from the previous wine. Okay, so um, aromatic on the aroma intensity. If I had a guess on how old the wine was, whether it was one to three years, four to six, four to seven years, I would say it's youthful. 
It's not it's not really that fruit forward, but it's not very minerality. Um, my guess is it's it's a couple years old. Now I'm getting um, some of the darker fruits, some of the darker red fruits. And I'm getting actually a little bit of pepper. Like black pepper. But I'm also getting a little bit of like green, green pepper. All right, let's go ahead and taste it. You can see I was circling a bunch of stuff while I was tasting it. So, kind of off dry. It's got a hint of sweetness, but it's not really, doesn't really have much sweetness to it. Um, medium body, acidity, I kind of think that there's a description of fresh. It's got a bit of freshness to it. Um, low, low tannins, um, and they're soft. Good balance. Um, it's it's a 13.8 percent alcohol. I'd never know. Okay, um, the acid's good, the tannin's good, and a little nice little sugar. There's this. Um, I'm going to call it moderate flavor intensity, but there's this one fruit that is just coming through. It's one of those things where I know the fruit, like it's a fruit I've eaten before, but I, I'm like. It's like apricot. Not something I would expect um, from a Cab Merlot blend. Apricot dates. Kind of apricotish date type of thing. Um, I'll even go strawberry a bit. But it's definitely a more fruit forward wine on the palate than it is on the nose. Um, so it's one of those times where, you know, sometimes wines, the, the, the nose and the palate are, are perfect together. They, not perfect, but they match up precisely. Because um, remember, your taste really is a lot of it. Your taste is coming from from your from your nose, not from your tongue. Your taste buds don't taste flavors. It's more sensations, you know, sweet, sour, salt, um, sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and uh, savoriness. Save you know, savory, which is like umami in Japanese. Um, but you know, I, I get a bit of a fruit roll up type of, of, of flavor to it. So it's got a nice little bit of sweetness to it. It's easy drinking. It's not it's not one of those wines that's really, you know, again, reaching out, hitting you in the face, hitting you in the mouth with the tannins. Um, so this is a wine you could drink on its own, but I'd still suggest you put some put some food with it, but some lighter fair food. Um, you know, that Ed Smooth Red that we had, it's not same. it doesn't taste the same as Ed Smooth Red, so I'm not trying to say, Oh, it's Ed Smooth Red, just a little bit different. Um, no, but but it, it's it's not as light as Ed Smooth Red, but it's like like one step up. If if you're looking for a red wine that you wanted to kind of try out, and it, even though it's, it's 
mainly a Cabernet Sauvignon based wine. It's not a heavy cab. I'll read what they have on, on the website. Grand Reserve is a yummy blend of Cab Sauv and Merlot. Medium body Cabernet is loaded with cherry and dark berry fruit flavors. I see the cherry in that. Um, soft tannins, nice acidity, which is pretty much what I just said. Um, and they call it like, um, it's, because, it's known across the state as consumers' house wine because of its easy drinkability and great value. It is. For a $10 bottle of wine, I'd get it. Um, what, what do I score it? I'm going to say, I'm going to give it, I would give it an 87. Um, I think it's a solid wine. I think it's really good. Um, it's easy drinking. And if you find it, you find it in the grocery store, if you're, you know, in Texas, uh, for that $10 or less range, get it. Um, if you buy it off the website, go ahead and get it. So something I would totally recommend. Um, as you can see, I, I, instead of like trying to, you know, match up the uh, cork with in the little capsule with the wine, I just said, put them all together. I mean, I could have, I mean, I can tell all the ones, but um, tons of wines there. You just kind of pile them on the table. But anyway, uh, as always, stop by the website. Um, visit all these websites, that, visit all the uh, winery websites that I put all the links down below. Um, you know, they, they've got some good stuff there. Not every wine you're going to find at, at a winery is great. I told them if I didn't like it, I told them I didn't like it. <clears throat> um, but uh, I also told them the ones I liked the best, and the, those are the ones I did buy. I didn't buy all the ones I liked, but because I do have some kind of budget. But um, anyway, check out these wines. Um, Texas wines is, you know, one of those things where, you know, I, I kind of see they everyone keeps talking about Texas is where California was, where Napa was 30 years ago. Um, in the 70s, 80s, uh, and I can kind of see that from ha from talking to these winemakers and, and their ideas and what they're doing and what, what I do know of the early days of Napa and Sonoma. But, uh, you know, check out these Texas wines. I mean, Texas is going to be one of those states I really do think, and it is a bit of, you know, Homerism that, uh, and I don't mean Homer as in the, the author or as in Homer Simpson, you know, talking about playing for the home team. Um, you know, a little bit of homerism that, you know, you, you want Texas to do well, you want your own state to do well. But, you know, I do think that there's, there's something to be said that there's, there's a lot of excitement over the past few years with, you know, the, the past decade, really, Texas wine is starting to really become much better. Uh, not every wine you're going to get from Texas is going to be spectacular. Just like any other state, you're going to find the, the really good ones and the really bad ones. Um, but Texas does, is going to suffer from the fact that you're going to have a lot of really pretty decent wines that are going to be priced kind of high compared to the same kind of quality wine you're going to get from a California. The problem is California is like Walmart of wine. They do a ton of it, volume, volume, volume. So they can get away with lower prices because that's what the market demands. Outside of California and even, you know, in Oregon, Washington, New York, you start having, you know, places like Texas and Virginia and Arizona and um, New Jersey or whatever, whatever state you want to pick, Michigan, that their wines are going to be kind of priced a little bit higher than you would expect, you know, the same quality from California. This is a wine that I think is priced right about where it would be if it was a California wine. I don't think it's an overpriced wine. I think it's priced very well. And I know that Ed is very conscious of price. You know, he doesn't want to undercut the market for Texas wines, but he also doesn't want to price himself out of the market. That's going to do it for today. Uh, this is the last of the Texas wine series. Uh, stay tuned for the next uh, episode, which I don't know what day of the week it's going to be, because um, it's a wine I bought exclusively for the ladies.